sometimes your friends tend out turned out to be your force neetha has turned out to be the arch enemy of me by giving this topic to me probably she looked at me and said you look very old talk about it <laughs> even though i am not that biologically old anyway i hope i can do some justice to what i have been asked to do and my thanks to idec family for this opportunity the biggest advantage of walking on path of honesty is that there is no crowd enjoy the peaceful journey of life with almost no traffic so if you are very honest in what we do in life there are hardly any people around you this is what's happening in evidence based medicine not many are honest in so with this opening remarks i would like to honestly talk to you about how little i know about this work i have no conflicts of interest but i have two disclosures to do here the first one is no one let me repeat no one including god can give you a clarity on why we age people they are so egotistical in their activity that their theory is right they are not ready to listen and god the almighty has already started the wheel turning and he says i can't bring it back so with this disclosure the second one is it took millennia for you and i to start working on why human beings age and it took 200 years to come to certain theoretical conclusions why we become old but it, they have given me 25 minutes to convince you <laughs> so go easy on it when the qa comes in i would do it in three concepts aging or aging whether you are on this side of atlantic or that side of atlantic healthy successful aging and what is done or what is being done for healthy successful aging the question why when what you all know about aging has been dogging all of us do you have a answer for that let's look at it so the first question what is aging or aging whatever sagging skin graying hair loss of muscle increasing fat especially around the waist faulty memory slow thinking and reaction look at me <laughs> sound silly don't you think so it does there are a lot of people who bald at a very premature age and they are very fat at a very young age but they are not yet aging and here i would like to you know digress a little bit when we were all born we were one day old did you start aging the question is very difficult to answer because look at physiology it states first 18 years of our life on earth you cannot call it as aging you have to call it as growth and development probably next 10 years growth stops linear or whatever the development still continues after the age of 30 or 28 or 25 we all start age so if there are people below the age of 30 don't bother those who are above the age of 30 open your ears listen to me do you know this acronym cupid i'm sure all of you especially 60s and above that blue pill the de gerontology definition is the acronym cupid continuous universal progressive intrinsic and deleterious process that decreases an organism's ability to maintain homeostasis in the face of environmental stressors and therefore increases the organism's likelihood of dying it's a very nice definition of aging if you ask me think of cupid you lose your sexual drive types of aging chronological age biological age psychological age so many and the stage there is we all as undergraduates were enamored by freudian theory you know so many of them erickson piaget you know social concepts psychological concepts physical concepts of stages of psychological aging that we have but chronological biological and physiological if you put there are a lot of mosquitoes here boss i think i am resistant to all them okay is the functional age today if you are talking about aging let's not split it into chronological you are 60 years old but biologically you are just 45 you are 45 years old you are biologically 60 these are all digressing activity which will take you nowhere it's time we decide about functional age 
if we can look at it, we can probably find an answer for healthy aging. The functional age encompasses all the three. It's not just growing old in number of years. It's not just having the right numbers when you take, take your blood or do whatever uh, interventional test that you do. It is the functional component of how you age, how good you are with your friends, with your neighbors, the way you have lived, etc., etc., like that. I hope I make a difference here. If you want to talk about aging, forget about chronological and biological age, think of functional age. Probably we can take a better step towards it. This is not from any medical activity. It is from a sociological uh, concept or a bent of mind called riddle of ages. And there are plenty of theories. I have taken, you know, I should thank Nita for having given me an opportunity to brush and improve my concept of what is aging. I could bring it down into three levels, evolutionary theories, systemic theory, and molecular and cellular theory. There are so many people have come up with so many concepts. The evolutionary theory is mutation, disposable, soma, antagonistic, neuroendocrine theory, immunological theory of systemic theories, and molecular has error catastrophe, free radical, waste product, DNA damage, and telomere theory. In 25 minutes, I don't think I can convince you about all this. The issue is two major concepts. When you classify, what is the description that you have to take care of? These are all just additions. I could, you can always take a picture if you want to. <laughs> I can go back. There is no point me talking about it, except to talk about neuroendocrine, immunology, the telomere theory, etc., like that. I hope you know about telomere theory, or a telomere, that's the end of your chromosome. TTT, GG, some funny things are there. The longer it is, longer longevity you have. Shorter it is, you're going to die faster, which is classically explained in cancer biology, right? Otherwise, there are plenty of theories just to say that we have very little knowledge about why we age. You can go on discussing about it, but this question is very valid. Which is the most significant cause of aging? If somebody, I knew somebody would ask me, you tell me which is the most important. You tell me whether LDL should be less than 70. You remember Denham, Harmon and uh, Leonard Hayflick. I remember in uh, my postgraduate days, 35 years ago, the Hayflick phenomena of cosmetics was very popular, aging theory. Leonard Hayflick said, we are born with a numbered level of cell division. He went on to expose a lot of other things. In his Hayflick limiting theory of age, he said, the cells in your body have a limited propensity to divide. For example, fibroblasts, he said 50 times. After 50 times, what happens? The fibroblast does not divide. When it does not divide, you get wrinkling of the skin. So you have a 60-year-old with a lot of wrinkles. Look at Zargar. He has no wrinkles on his face. So he still has his hay flick phenomena intact. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stay in Kashmir. Yeah? Stay in Kashmir. Stay in Kashmir. <laughs> this is way. These two are, you know, Denham, Harmon, and Leonard Hayflick. These two concepts are the most significant, plausible explanation that we become older. Harmon's concept was free radical damage. It encompassed so many systemic theories, neuroendocrine, etc., etc. And Hayflix was about the cellular mortality, not immortal lines. These two are probably the most significant, if you ask me, as a question today. But there are so many more oxidative stress, glycation, telomere shortening, side reaction or cross-linkage of proteins, mutations, aggregation of proteins. My God, there are so many more. And you have an equation. Mathematicians also have gotten it. You remember in 2000, WHO said there should be a geriatric explosion of medical people in every country and India followed and said, we will train young people. I was young, pretty young at that time, I don't know. You were all made to go through a geriatric training program. And within five years, there was a gerontology. What is gerontology? 
you invite everybody. You invite mathematicians, you invite social scientists, you do everything and say gerontology and say physical, social, psychological, physiological study of aging. Geriatrics is a narrow field of where if you become old, you have problems, we'll treat you. So this is the unfortunate thing and you have a Gompez equation which in cancer medicine they have used it in a big way and I cannot explain it. Mu x is equal to alpha e beta x. You can read this. So even mathematicians have walked into aging. Where are we standing today? I leave it at that. But this is something that you should look back from your biochemistry days. You remember Fenton reaction? Ferrous iron, ferric iron, oxidative stress. Very sim simplest form of reaction that can explain oxidative stress in your body. And it has branched into so many more things. So you can look at biochemistry and equations, mathematical or otherwise, and talk about it. So a brief about aging. It is not about chronological. It's not about biological. It is about functional aging. L let's start looking at people who age as a functional concept. There are so many theories. Everybody says, or they have staked claim that this is right, but none of them can be right. But if at all you want to really look at it, there are three theories the systemic, molecular, and cellular. If you can think about it and make some notes, probably you can do a better job for older people. Let's look at what is healthy and successful aging. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge but imagination. So it's time, forget about the knowledge you have acquired, start imagining what best you can do about healthy aging, opti optimizing opportunities for good health, so that older people can take an active part in society, enjoy an independent and high quality of life by the development and maintenance of optimal mental, social, physical well-being and function. I keep telling my postgraduates to become a very effective speaker and a very effective teacher, you have to go and do your MA English. This is it. To understand this definition of healthy aging, it's not enough to know just medicine. You need to know so many more things about mental, social, physical well-being and function. Let's look at it. I divide it into three components. If you want to call yourself that you are aging healthily, there should be three components to it. The first one is live free of disability and disease. For the last one and a half, two days, we have been talking about disease and disability. Do you think we are aging healthily? had high cognition and physical abilities. Give statins, you tend to forget. You become Alzheimer's. Are we talking about that? Or was interacting with others in meaningful ways, social interactions, we are very good in this. Extremely good, especially medical people. They are extremely good. If you take social interactions, no physician or a surgeon should age. But when it comes to cognitive and physical abilities, slows down. When it comes to disability or disease, that's it. So if you are out of disability and no disease, if you are physically and cognitively you are doing pretty well and your interaction socially in and around you is good, what is it? You are healthily aging. That's the final definition. And there are so many constituents of successful aging, life expectancy, life satisfaction, mental, psychological health, Name them, personal growth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Social networks, support, participation, activity. We keep telling this in all fora about how we should be active in life, not just being physicians. And there are additional lay definitions also, accomplishments, enjoyment of diet, why people want to hold on to the president posts of associations. Probably one of them is to healthily age. So healthy aging, you know now. It's not about just becoming older and older and older and one day reach your maker. It's about being bereft of diseases and disabilities, being physically and mentally active and having a good social interaction. What is done and being done about being healthy? These are the mechanisms that we can attach some importance and do something about it. I will not speak much about it except two or three analogies or examples. Multiple pathways of DNA repair. If you remember, 
in 2005 there was a banting lecture in uh, EASD i forget the doctor's name he was a type 1 diabetic from us pathobiology of diabetes complications he was talking about dna repair michael brownley michael brownley brownley yes albert Dr. einstein brownley. your a type 1 diabetic at the age of 14 delivered it at the age of 55 and he was pretty healthy at the time impressed me beyond my thinking process defenses against free radicals removal of abnormal proteins and prevention of their accumulation and formation immune response modulation and cellular replicative senescence and apoptosis these are the mechanisms if we can tackle probably we will health agely and probably live forever here in fact i had half a mind when i came here you know unfortunately i was not a sanskrit uh, student in high school and uh, puc i really feel that i should have done it because i could quote from sanskrit about how you can live for 800 900 days as a sage that is there in the scriptures and how like bhishma pitamaha you can die whenever you want unfortunately i could not do it because it becomes more of a philosophical speech not a scientific one but medically speaking have we done anything forget about sociologically psychologically which is beyond our thinking process or probably activity medically speaking have we done anything yes the very first true anti aging therapy was estrogen replacement whatever that has happened that's left to you people then dhea replacement is advocated but evidence based medicine no put your head in fire put your feet in ice what is in comfort zone your gluteal region evidence based medicine for you gh replacement in adults a lot of things are happening i don't know what's going to happen but i wanted to mention about cortisol here if you look at the physiology endocrine physiology as we grow chronologically older what happens you start decreasing all hormone secretions except cortisol this is called as a dark hormone not in physiology but in sociology as you grow older more cortisol hypothalamic drive comes down and more cortisol and cortisol is probably they are looking at cortisol as a mechanism of aging and you i was surprised to know phenytoin is a cortisol adjuster dhea can be given the next generation is about hypothalamus hormones we will not go there right now so neuroendocrine medically speaking we have done good we can bring down the rapidity of unhealthy aging by doing doing this calorie restriction this is something that is fantastic british group worked on that and said if you can fast unmindful of whether you're healthy or diseased like diabetes and all that you can age slowly but the definition of fasting by those group then what we do is a little bit different if the distance between two meals that you eat in a day is 14 hours and in and around 14 hours you call it as fasting not three days like jains eight days like those people one month etc etc like that so there are huge number of concepts that have come out i have not mentioned sirt here silent information regulator proteins big thing seven subgroups supposed to be the only way today you can improve sirt activity in your body is by fasting it's what they are talking look at what it is reduction of calorie intake it's not carbohydrate fat or protein around 40% whatever that you have been eating bring it down to 40% for lifetime your patient will say what sir there is no point living to 90 let me eat and die at 75 right may promote longevity by a metabolic reprogramming reduced energy metabolism increased biosynthesis and turnover of proteins these are all theoretical evidence based concept that you are talking but calorie restriction does lead to healthy aging you are not going to become osteoporotic or osteoarthritic very fast if you are not very fat acid waste products this is pretty funny alkaline water you all know now because i'm sure many of your patients have been enquiring about alkaline water at least in bengaluru many patients have asked me that machine i forget the name it starts with k some uh, japanese guy he said 
you drink alkaline water, you will rejuvenate yourself. And that machine costs about 1,75,000 rupees. And people are buying it. It separates your regular drinking water into acidic water and alkaline water. There are indications for acidic water, there are indications for alkaline water. Indications for alkaline water is plenty. Start drinking in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. Hunza miracle is the one that really you have to look at it. Hunza, the mountain water comes from the surrounding glaciers and this, it is structured hexagonally. This water is filled with mineral solutes, highly alkaline. These are Hunza people in northern Pakistan, high altitude mountain valleys. These people claim to be 150 years old and many of them are documented centenarians. If you remember the older textbook of medicine, there were three sons of medicine, I forget them. Harrison textbook of medicine, when I was a postgraduate said, the average or rather the lifespan of a human is 94 years. After 94, they die of old age. It is there in older Harrison textbook of medicine. So 94 years, many of them even today are documented centenarian and many claim that they are 150 years old. But when you look at the available data, the highest living, what is that, uh, I forget. You know, you get a medal, is 127 years. Somebody, I forget it. Now, this is something that is happening and this is the way we all have to really look at it. And if some of you are technologically moving in, look at this. We come, okay, one minute. Sense, senescence, nuclear mutation and epimutation, oncosense, and I'm sorry. This went off, okay. They are still debated, but now engineering group has got him. It's called as green technology. I hope many of you identify this man, this sage. He is 111 years old. Recently he had his 111th birthday. A Swamiji from Karnataka. He is a super centenarian. Will death be optional in aging by curable 2045? Many people are asking me. By 2045, I told them I will not be around. Don't worry. Death of death. <laughs> they will not be bothering me. So the concept of holistic health, harmonious state of mind, body and spirit, the definition of healthy aging. But what's important is these three, I urge you people to really read about them. They are not medical references. They are from some other concepts. But I would like to stop here stating, very successful dying in the discourse of successful aging. You want to ask your people to age healthily. At the age of 60, you develop diabetes. Age of 68, you have no limbs. At the age of 70, you have no kidneys. At the age of 72, you are unable to walk around because of a massive heart attack or a heart failure. 73, you die. So what is this successful dying? Whether you live for 75 years or 80 years or 72 years. Till 72 years, you should be healthy enough. 73rd year, bye-bye. So I would like to think in that line for my patients, including me, my last line. Probably no greater honor can come to any man than the respect of his colleagues. I hope I have garnered some respect from you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shekhar.